Well, you're right, guys. Time for another compost head-to-head -head showdown. And this time we've got um, Aldi, B&Q, J. Arthur Bowers, and my own from the compost bin on the allotment. Plus I've thrown in a Mother Earth pot as a control method because we know how Mother Earth performs. Well, let's see how it goes this time. Well, you're right, guys. Just before it starts raining again, I'd like to introduce you to the next four candidates for a compost trial. Now, this one is the rebranded B&Q Verve. It's now called... Uh, where are we? There it is. Good Home. So they've changed it. Same colour, same uh, B&Q, you know, uh, standard colours. Uh, what's it say there then? The Good Home multi-purpose compost is perfect for use in pots, hanging baskets and seed trays. It locks in essential nutrients and moisture to help your crops flourish. Blah, blah, blah. Used with plant food. Yeah, so... Uh, multi-purpose growing, seeds and cuttings, planting and repotting, hanging baskets. And over here, little symbol, 0% peat, so peat free. And the next candidate is Garden Line Enriched Multi-Purpose Compost from Aldi. Suitable for seeds, fruit, veg and plants. Uh, dum, dum. Peat reduced formula. Enriched with vital nutrients, feeds plants for up to three months. 40 litres. Enriched multi-purpose compost. Perfect for all your growing needs, from sowing seeds to cuttings, potting up. Um, hanging baskets, sowing seeds, fill the tray, blah, blah, blah. No good for lime-hating plants. And I can't see. It says peat reduced, but it doesn't say how much. And this is the J. Arthur Bowers multi-purpose compost. Uh, multi-purpose compost, good for this and that. Sowing seeds, yep. 100 litre bag, this one. Um, now the website says it's peat-free, but it doesn't make any, any note of being peat-free on here. Okay, one more, and that is my own from... The West End plot number eight, compost bin number one. Let's get it off there, it's a bit bright there, isn't it? Here we are. So I've just taken a couple of uh, trowel fulls from the bottom of the uh, compost bin. So we'll see how that compares. Okay then guys, here's the four composts. I've just taken uh, ran random scoops from as close to the centre of the bag as I could, except for my own, which was, uh, you know, just out of the compost heap. So what I'm going to do, quick look at it all first, have a quick feel through it, have a quick... See if there's any big bits in it first of all. And um, then we'll do the soil test, we'll get that ready for tomorrow. And I'll get some uh, lettuce seeds started, same lettuce as last time. Victorinus. Yeah, Victorinus. Right, so the first thing is, let's put the scales out of the way a minute, don't need those. Let's have a quick look at the composts. Well, there's my own. <laughs> um, the best way to do this is have a... Nice and friable. <laughs> yeah, oh, I've still got a few sticks in it. Oh, they break, look, soft. So... The little white bits you can see in it. If you can see those. That's um, shredded paper or shredded, shredded card and paper. Yeah, well, what isn't broken down is breaking down, so I'd say. So, yeah, I'm quite happy with that. Let's uh, zoom you in a bit. Yeah, so right in my book, that's pretty good stuff. Right, next up we have Garden Line from Aldi. Okay, see him again, let's have a quick look. Now, this isn't peat free, but it says on the packet reduced peat content. Um, well, it looks like peat compost. Little, um, what you call it, uh, fertiliser granules in there. Right, so I'll put a bit in here. Right, this one is Good Home from B&Q. That's their new uh, revamped Verve. They've changed the name. Now this is peat free. Uh, 
you can feel the fibres in it, the feely, the sticky fibres, you know, sticks, but so far no big lumps. Yeah, I like that. A twig there, but see that's difference with that and mine. That is a proper stick, whereas mine, it's all breaking down. Yeah, that's all right. Oh, yeah, so I'll put that one in here. And the last one will be J. Arthur Bowers, so that'll be J. A. B. I'll go there. And this is, I believe it's Pete Free. I think it is J. Arthur, yeah, J. Arthur Bowers, so. Oh, not a good start. <laughs> Second, not a good start. Third, not a good start. Ah, this is one of those then, forest floor, forest floor sweepings. Feels up, oh, it's pouring down now. Right, let's get some of this in there. I'll leave the uh, big sticks out. It's nice and light and fluffy though, I must admit. I'm getting soaked now, guys. Adjourn to the greenhouse. Right, back in a minute. <laughs> I'm back out here again. Well, it is April, isn't it? April showers. So, two seeds in each again, and a um, couple of thank yous while I'm doing this. Um, it was Woody at um, Cumbrian Homestead that suggested I try my own soil stroke compost. So, there we are. And um, Steve at um, Steve's Seaside Kitchen and Allotment suggested trying them in smaller cells, cell trays, or cells, because the uh, the big pots that I grew them in last time may have hindered their growth. On with the um, NPK trial, and I need 50 grams of sample and 200 grams of water. So I'll just zero everything off. Got a spoon here. Perhaps I'll write it on first, really, isn't I? J A B. J A B. That's on zero, so just 50 mil. 50 mil? 50 grams. Same with water, isn't it? 47. And take that up to 250. Two twenty. Two thirty. Two thirty. <laughs> Dentist appointment, two thirty. There we are. Good morning guys, hopefully that will clear tomorrow and we can do the um, pH and MPK tests. I sat in the greenhouse because it is blowing a hooligan outside. It's gusting up to 40-50 mile an hour at the moment. Alright, it's, it's on and off, but um, anyway, I'm not filming outside. So here's the, um, the four composts. They've been in the right amount of water overnight, in fact 24 hours now. Um, I'm just going to show you them quickly against the light try to it's hard to do really see that's the Audi one and that's like dark that's gonna have trouble um about a quarter sunk and two thirds a quarter sunk and three quarters are floating this is the B and Q one well, that's about um well that's all sunk yeah Okay, next up, um, B and Q. That was B and Q. Aldi. This is um, J Arthur Bowers. Mostly sunk again. The last but not least is my own out of compost heap, <laughs> and that is uh, nearly all sunk and uh, very clear. 
So I'm hoping that's going to be quite good, actually. <laughs> right, I'm not going to uh, film me doing all the tasks. It'll take ages. I'll just get on with it and uh, show you the results later. And just to show you how the results actually compare in the tubes, here they are, Audi, B&Q, J. Arthur Bowers on my own. Uh, just so you can see all the different colours. Mine's probably a bit brighter than the rest because the solution was that much clearer. Right guys, well that's all the tests finished. A bit laborious, but we got her. God, that wind's still howling. No big surprises. I'll tell you what's a nice one I like. is the J. Arthur Bowers, despite all the tree trunks in it, it's got a low pH. I might be thinking about using that for my potatoes. OK then, here we are, seven days after sowing the seeds, we've got the first germination. That's a little bit slower than normal for me for this time of the year. That's probably because I left them outside rather than put them in the greenhouse. Uh, we've got two in the B&Q, one in J. Arthur Bowers, one in mine, and nothing in the Aldi one just yet. We've got one in the control as well. And like I said, I've used Mother Earth in the control just to compare it with the rest, because we know what the Mother Earth is like. I was going to say that come rain or shine, I've taken a photograph every day. But I've just realised we didn't have any rain at all during the three weeks that these were growing. You can see for yourself, but um, my own compost and the Mother Earth control seem to be the stronger of the seedlings at the moment. But the B&Q ones are catching up a little bit, I think. Plus, mine is now riddled with weed seedlings. But once they get going, they all seem to take off at the same rate, apart from the poor little Audi one at the front there. Hey, OK, guys, it's now uh, 23 days since we started the the second compost trial with the lettuce, that's the Victorinus RZ lettuce. And I'm going to call it a day there because some of the compost is running out of nutrients. The Aldi one says it's got um, up to three months of nutrient. Anyway, let me just uh, zoom you in a little bit and uh, see what we think of it. The only one that had two germinate was the B&Q compost. All the others had one. Now this could be because unlike the first trial, I let these germinate outside. The first trial they germinated in the greenhouse, then I moved them outside, so it's a little bit different. Um, yeah, two germinate. The other thing worthy of note is that my own compost, that one there, absolutely riddled with weed seeds. <laughs> well, yeah, assume that well, a weed is anything growing in the wrong place, so it is uh, weed seeds. So of these, the best is B and Q. Um, second best, I'd say, would be hard to tell, but I'm going to go from that's a bit deeper. That one, yeah. So these, my own and J Arthur Bow is the same, and the worst performing is the Audi one. It's approximately two thirds the size of the rest, but again. <laughs> The peat-based one it outshines them all, really. I mean, tiny little pots as well, so... I don't know what that says about compost. It's um, not, not such a stunning trial as the last one. I mean, it's, uh, that's the worst. Where's the worst one? The Audi one. Let's compare that to the Audi one. Right next to it. Look. Get the compost the same level. There we are. So... And that's in 23 days, so if it goes full term, if you like, what's it going to be like then? I think this debate will go on for a few years yet until we find a decent standard for peat-free compost. So in conclusion, peat wins a day yet again. Good old peat. Well, like I said before, guys, I'm not against peat-free. I want peat-free, but I want peat-free to be as good as peat, and I want it to be at a price I can afford, and I want it to be reliable. And every bag I get is virtually the same as the bag I bought last time. I don't want to be having to guess that, well, will this be any good for lettuce this time round? You know. Let's see. Let's just hope someone's listening that will make, uh, make a change. The change is coming, obviously, you know. 
Uh, deep down, I do feel sorry for the trade who are going to have to deal with this. You think, just think if that was my garden centre now, or, you know, local garden centre. They're going to have to keep these for an extra week before they can sell them like that. No one's going to buy little lettuces like that. Anyway. Yeah, how well. Not me, not me. I've been here all day.